turn winter waste into gold. How to make thick branches rot fast and get fertile soil by spring. Most gardeners believe composting slows or stops when temperatures drop, but the truth is, decomposition never really sleeps. It just needs the right push. In this Soil and Crop Central video, we'll show you exactly how to keep your compost pile active and productive through winter, turning even the thickest plant material into nutrient-rich humus by spring. Let's dive straight into the practical steps that make it happen. Shredding, the foundation of fast decomposition. One simple rule governs the entire composting process. The smaller the pieces, the faster they break down. Thick branches, stalks, and fibrous plant matter are the biggest obstacles to winter composting because of their size and toughness. The solution is mechanical. Cut them down with pruning shears, a hatchet, or a garden shredder if you have one. Reducing the material size increases the surface area available to microbes, which means more contact, more action, and much faster decomposition. If a shredder isn't available, don't skip this step. Use what you have. Even a small ax can make a big difference. The goal is not perfection, but progress. You want every piece small enough to mix easily with the rest of your composting materials. Layering, the secret science of a breathing compost. Once you've prepared your materials, the next crucial step is layering. A compost pile isn't a random heap of organic matter. It's a living structure. To keep it balanced and active through winter, you need alternating layers that provide both energy and structure. Start with a dry, airy layer such as straw, sawdust, or dry leaves. These are carbon-rich materials. Next, add a layer of green waste like fresh grass clippings, vegetable peels, or leafy tops. These are nitrogen-rich and serve as food for the microbes. Then, sprinkle a thin layer of soil or old compost on top to introduce the microorganisms that will fuel the decomposition process. Repeat this pattern carbon, nitrogen, soil, until your pile reaches at least one cubic meter in volume. This alternating structure prevents the compost from compacting, ensures oxygen flow, and allows even the thicker materials to decompose properly. Moisture, keeping the microbes alive. Microbes need water to function, even in cold weather. A dry compost pile is a dead one, the ideal moisture level is similar to that of a squeezed sponge, damp but not dripping wet. During autumn and early winter, if there's little rainfall, water your compost regularly. Use any available liquid from your kitchen that doesn't contain harsh chemicals. Leftover vegetable broth, pasta water, or cooled soup stock all work wonderfully. For an even greater boost, you can prepare a homemade compost activator. Just dissolve 10 grams of dry yeast and 2 tablespoons of sugar in 10 liters of warm water. Let this mixture sit for about 24 hours, then go ahead and pour it evenly over your compost pile. The yeast is going to activate microbial growth, and the sugar, well, it feeds those microbes, helping them multiply rapidly and keep breaking down organic matter even when temperatures drop. Air is the unseen engine of composting. Compost microbes are living organisms, and like all living things, they need air. Without oxygen, decomposition slows down dramatically and, honestly, it starts to produce a foul, sour smell. To prevent this, make sure to turn or loosen your compost pile every two to three weeks using a pitchfork. You don't need to disturb the entire pile each time, just aerate the sides and upper layers. This simple step ensures that oxygen reaches deep into the pile, keeping the process aerobic, clean, and efficient. If you've layered your compost properly, aeration will be a whole lot easier. The structure of dry materials mixed with moist greens naturally promotes airflow, reducing the chance of the pile compacting into a soggy, smelly mass. Wood ash is truly the unsung hero of winter compost. It's one of the best natural supplements you can use during the colder months. Wood ash contains potassium and calcium, which are essential nutrients for soil health, and it helps neutralize acidity in the pile. 
In cold weather, when decomposition tends to slow, having a balanced pH becomes especially important. Use 1 liter of wood ash per cubic meter of compost. Just sprinkle it lightly between layers or on top of the pile after turning. Ash also helps deter pests and enriches the final compost with minerals that your garden plants will really appreciate come springtime. Nitrogen is really the fuel for rapid rotting. While carbon materials like straw and branches provide structure, nitrogen provides the fuel that drives decomposition. Without enough nitrogen, the composting process can stall, leaving you, well, with half decomposed material by spring. If your pile contains a lot of dry stalks or woody matter, you can supplement it with nitrogen-rich materials. A quick and efficient way to do this is by using urea, just dissolve two matchbox-sized portions of urea in 10 liters of water and pour this mixture evenly over the compost pile. Urea provides readily available nitrogen that speeds up microbial activity. Alternatively, if you have access to manure or chicken droppings, you can mix in small amounts, just enough to boost nitrogen without creating odors. Baking soda is great for balancing the pH and neutralizing odors. Sometimes, especially when compost piles have a whole lot of green waste, they can get pretty acidic and start to smell bad. This is where baking soda really works wonders. It neutralizes acidity, kills off harmful bacteria, and gets rid of odor almost instantly. Just sprinkle about two tablespoons of baking soda across the surface of your compost pile. You can repeat this every few weeks if the compost starts to smell sour or you notice it's fermenting. Beyond just controlling odor, baking soda also helps create a balanced environment for good microbes to thrive, especially during winter when microbial activity naturally slows down. Here's a key rule for healthy compost, never add diseased plants. One mistake a lot of gardeners make is tossing diseased plant material into the compost pile. This can really ruin all your hard work. Infected tops from tomatoes, potatoes, or cucumbers, especially if they show signs of fungal disease or pest infestation, should never go into your compost. Cold winter composting just doesn't get hot enough to destroy those pathogens, so these diseases can actually survive and spread back into your soil next season. It's best to burn diseased plant material instead. If you accidentally added some, a light sprinkling of baking soda might help reduce the risk, but honestly, prevention is far more effective. Remember, a healthy compost pile starts with healthy inputs. Now, here's the winter miracle. Compost that works while you sleep. If you've chopped your materials, layered them properly, kept the moisture right, and added natural boosters like yeast, urea, wood ash, and baking soda, your compost pile is going to stay biologically active all winter long. Even when the surface layers freeze, the core stays warm and alive. Microbes keep working, slowly but surely, breaking down thick branches and tough tops. By early spring, you'll find rich, dark, crumbly compost. It'll be warm to the touch, smell like forest soil, and be ready to feed your garden, all without a single bag of commercial fertilizer. The secret isn't complicated science. It's just consistency, balance, and a little bit of care. So, if you want your garden soil bursting with life next spring, start building your compost right now, even if it's freezing outside. The sooner you get started, the more time nature has to do its work beneath the snow. And hey, if this video from Soil and Crop Central helped you, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a comment about your composting results. Together, we're building gardens that thrive year-round, naturally, sustainably, and beautifully.